Well, there you have it, guys. That's Windows XP running on an iMac. Time to install Windows Vista. Happy New Year, everyone. It's now 2024. On New Year's Eve of 2023, Communication Established was released. If you haven't listened to it yet, I highly recommend doing so. You can find it on Apple Music, Spotify, or whatever your preferred streaming platform is by simply searching for DCG Retrowave. Links will be in the description below to listen to it here on YouTube. Anyway, it's time to talk about Windows Vista. If you saw my last video, you know that I recently installed Windows XP on a 2009 iMac. And I'm going to be replacing that installation with Windows Vista Ultimate. Now, two things you guys are probably thinking. First of all, Dallas, why'd you go through all that trouble to install Windows XP on it just to wipe that install for Windows Vista? Well, I've been wanting to make a video about Windows XP running on a Mac for a very long time because I've done this to three Macs at this point. I don't know how many fingers I actually put up there, but that's beside the point. Um, and I did that ex the original XP install on that machine uh, in early 2022 when I first got it. So for this video, I thought, hey, why don't I just wipe that install, start fresh, set it up as if it was going to be my music PC, and then wipe it, install Windows Vista, and set that up as my music PC. PC, Mac. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically an Apple branded PC at this point, but um, anyway, that's, that's why I did that. Um, I wanted to make that video, I figured why not just do a fresh install, go through the whole process, play around with XP for a bit, and then actually set up the operating system I'm going to be using. Which brings me to the second thing you guys are probably cringing at, which is why, am, why Windows Vista of all things, you know? Um, I personally had a good experience with Vista back in the day. Please don't crucify me for saying that. I know it's a very controversial opinion to even like Vista on a personal basis. I'm not saying Vista was good or great or the best version of Windows ever or anything like that. I'm just saying that I had a good experience with it. And I used it for a year as my main operating system during the time that it was still an officially supported version of Windows. So. Yeah, I, I have a lot of nostalgia for Vista. I didn't get to use it much when I was really little. I actually started using it in 2014. Uh, so I was a little late to the party there. I mean, that's Windows 8.1 era right there. But um, I'm really excited. I never got to use Vista Ultimate back then. I was on home premium. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is actually really exciting for me. And all the software I'm going to be using is XP software anyway, so it's not like it's going to struggle on here, you know. I don't need to, to go up to Windows 7 and take advantage of things that I couldn't already do on XP. I'm literally just doing everything I was going to do on XP, but on Vista. Just for the sake of running Windows Vista on a Mac. Actually, just for the sake of running Windows Vista here, not specifically the fact that it's going to be on a Mac, but you get the point. It's worth noting that while the Windows XP video was recorded during the day when I had natural light coming in through the window, I'm recording this at night, so that's not going to be the case here, and my bedroom lights suck. So I've decided to just film off the screen in the dark, because it's probably just going to be better anyway. I mean, the camera struggled to focus on the iMac display in the last video anyway, so this should be a lot easier. Let's get started! Oh, I already have to enter the product key. Automatically activate Windows when I'm online? No, I'll manually do it afterwards. Upgrade has been disabled. That's okay, we want to do this fresh anyway. We're going to do it so fresh we're straight up deleting the partition.
This might be a problem, guys. The hardware ID is missing from my USB flash drive. Now, I'm assuming once I get, you know, Service Pack 2 installed on here and all the necessary drivers, I should be fine. But the problem is, how am I supposed to get that on there without a working USB flash drive? So, I'm going to try another drive and hope for the best. Okay, so the SanDisk USB didn't work, but a SanDisk micro SD works. Wait, what? What? No, no way. No, 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 no. Due to this early 2009 iMac not officially supporting 64-bit versions of Windows, I'm now switching to the 32-bit version of Windows Vista. Since we've already seen the installation process for Vista, I'm going to skip past that and cut straight to the installation of Boot Camp. Alright, so we've lost a gigabyte of RAM due to this now being 32-bit Windows, and it's weird because 32-bit Windows should still be able to access uh, just over 3 gigs, but for some reason on every Mac I've ever tried, it always caps out at 3, and then part of that is also now being used for the graphics card, so, yeah. We had uh, 3.72 according to 64-bit Windows, and now 2.72 here. Uh, let's get everything installed. Alright, there we go, I'm installing Service Pack 1 now. Alright, Service Pack 1 is now installed, we're going to move on to Service Pack 2 next. And look at that, 4 gigs of RAM is now usable. So something about installing SP1 fixed that. Both service packs have been installed. Now that we're on service pack 2, let's see if this USB flash drive actually works because it didn't before on the RTM. It worked! Let's go! Always trust software from Roland Corporation. Oh my gosh, guys, I so want to play some of these sample songs for you, but I don't want copyright claims that aren't for my own music, so I'm going to skip that, but seriously, check out I Guess You're Right. I feel like for most people, that was kind of like the Windows Vista theme. Aw, oh yeah, the version I grew up with, Windows Media Player 11. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. That's the GS Wait table. I forgot. I have to set that. I mean, this is not too bad, actually. The only thing is, you actually can't change that in Control Panel like on Windows XP. So if I go into here, Classic View. Of that. Okay, so it took me a while to find this, but basically you have to go under H key underscore current underscore user, then into software, Microsoft, Active Movie, DevNum, and then open this one here, and then you should see default MIDI out device. I believe this also fully applies to Windows 7 as well, but 8 and 10 don't work the same. They basically don't allow you to do this without third-party software, as far as I know. Um, and then you just find MIDI out ID. This was set to, uh, like, in hexadecimal all Fs, which just brought up the GS Wave table, but by setting it uh, to all zeros except for one in hexadecimal, uh, now we're able to do the following. Let me just go into, uh, where is it here? <laughs> Yes, this is the Cisco Hold music, and I really need to finish this MIDI. Ah, 
I ordered a USB sound card, um, an old uh, Creative Labs one. Just kind of waiting on that, and then I can do recordings, but I don't need to record anything right now, I just need to start working on midis. Because uh, I'm crazy like that, just finished a full album and going straight into the next one. Quality over quantity though, I'm not rushing this. Well I guess we're at that point in the video where we need to check out some classic Windows Vista software. So first of all, Windows Media Center. Uh, custom setup. Uh, sure, let's watch the video. From movies to television. Oh, I remember this one from Windows XP program. Media Center Edition. Video is a big part of Media Center. This guide will help make every television program that's actually really good quality for the time. look even better. You'll see some scenes with friends playing billiards to help you get the best looking image on whatever okay, well, I, you I, connect to Media Center. I very much understand how aspect ratio works, so I don't Setting think I need to see this. this guide is easy. Uh, we'll help you make okay. sure that you see the entire picture. Yeah, I, I can figure that out myself. Alright guys, my camera died, and while I could use it while plugged in, it just barely reaches this desk, and it's gonna be kinda of awkward to film with the cable, so I'm just gonna let that charge for now. In the meantime, uh, I was listening to I Guess You're Right by The Posies, aka the Windows Vista Anthem, as I mentioned earlier, and I'm doing my Portuguese lesson so Duo doesn't kill me. Alright, I have just enough battery to finish this video, so... Uh, let's make this quick. I already showed off Windows Media Center. I think let's just go straight into the games because let's be real, that's what you're all here for. And let's start with one of my favorites, Inkball, which some people probably think was introduced in Windows Vista and then was removed after that. And yes, it was removed right after Vista, but it was actually introduced in Windows XP Tablet PC Edition. Anyway, uh, just go like this. Oh. Uh, hold on. Yeah. There we go. Just uh, this one go this way. That is going super slow. Wait, how did me drawing a line on the back of the ball cause it to bounce the other way? Um. Uh, okay. Yeah. That was pretty terrible. Um, I can do better. I mean, I'll briefly load up Minesweeper just to show you guys how much this evolved. <laughs> And uh, yeah, they uh, they definitely modernized this. Uh, hmm. Oh. Anyway. Um, oh, no, not what I'm trying to do. Let me see here. We'll go to Solitaire next. I'll do the classics first. If I maximize this, is it actually gonna... Ah, oh, yes, the cards actually get larger. Unlike an XP where everything's just spaced out like crazy. Uh, obviously, we're gonna set it to Vegas mode, which is uh, how I did it last time. It, one card, because otherwise it's going to be impossible, since you can't cycle through this uh, more than once. Okay. Oh, this is actually looking pretty good. Alright, and now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Purple Place. Oh, and Mejong Titans is pretty good, too. Uh, which one do we start with? Hmm. Harder recipes? Uh, you know what? Screw it. We're going to go for the hardest. Uh, start here. Oh, it's been a while, actually. Okay, so. Uh, and then, I think... No, do I... Can I... No, I can't stack. Okay, okay. And then I have to... New wax paper? Wait, what? Uh... Hold on, hold on. Uh... And then I... Wait, what? Oh. What? Oh, wait. Move not allowed. Huh? Wait. Wait, what? 
Oh, I see. Okay, okay, and then I... Wait, so, but I'm supposed to put chocolate... Okay, I tried that and it didn't work the last time. Um... Okay, cool. That, that sounded gross, by the way. Um... And then... Uh... Oh, I don't think I need anything there. Um... Yellow? No, what? Okay. Um... I guess I'm... I guess I'm good. I think I'm doing this right. Oh, it's been so long, man. Keegan, correct! Yeah. That's disgusting. The only thing that's wrong... Is it the outfit? No. No, the outfit was good. And obviously the mouth is good, but I think we know the nose is good. Is it the eyes? No. Uh, is it the hat? No, no, the hat was, the hat was good. So it's, it's the nose, right? Wait, what? Did I guess the all nose yet? Wait, I didn't guess the purple? I thought I, d oh my gosh, oh well. And then, let's do this one. Okay. Nice. I almost forgot, before we activate Windows, I need to see what the Windows Experience Index on this thing is going to be. So now that everything's fully updated, let's try this out. Hey, that's actually pretty well-rounded. The weakest part was the gaming graphics, which makes sense because it's just a GeForce 9400, but yeah, overall, really solid machine. All right, so Windows Vista has this weird thing when connecting to Wi-Fi networks where it asks you to enter a pin that's separate from the, uh, the standard network key. And when it does this, it will say, enter the pin for uh, the manufacturer and the model that it thinks it is. Now. Um, this is a Sagemcom modem of some kind, I forget the exact model, Bell calls it the Home Hub 3000, but here Windows Vista is calling it the Quantena Topaz. And what's funny about this is that on an older Pace modem I had back in 2019, Windows Vista referred to it as the Pace Pace. Well, I'm going to have to activate this over the phone. I'm not going to do that for the video because you guys already know that works based on the XP video. Um, which, if you do want to see how the uh, Windows Phone activation thing works, check that out. And, and in general, just check out the XP video if you haven't already. But yeah, uh, I'm going to phone this in. Probably not actually today. I, I want to go to bed. I have work tomorrow. But uh, yeah. There you have it, guys. Windows Vista on an iMac. I like this operating system, and I'd love to hear what you think about it, whether that be, uh, you know, good things or bad things. Uh, let me know what your experience was with it back in the day, or even nowadays, because, you know, there's still crazy people like me using outdated operating systems in 2024. So uh, thank you so much for watching, I'm really looking forward to uploading more content like this throughout the year. I have lots planned for this channel, uh, with retro computing. Um, mobile devices like Palm PDAs for example, uh, retro gaming of course, and new MIDI music from yours truly. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I'm sorry, what? That's super weird.